and welcome to the beginning of Bookmas. As you can tell by my outfit and this fabulous sweater that you'll probably see a lot this month, I am filming on the same day as my last video because I vlog the way that I read. I read a whole bunch and then not at all and I just don't have the vlogging stamina to record and edit a video every single day so this is what you'll get. But enough with the introduction, I thought that I would start the book miss off with a casual conversational video on the hashtag be critical conversation that you know happened a month ago because I'm super relevant. But it was a video that every time I sat down to think about it and start to write something I just got overwhelmed and I know that I would have picked it apart so much that I would have just never made it. So this is me just diving in head first into this conversation and I'm not going to go as in depth because of that but there are some really really great videos on this topic out there in the world to begin with. The first one that comes to mind, you've probably already seen, but in case you haven't, it is Ron Litt's uh, Reading Critically video, and I will of course link that down below, and if I can compile a few others, they will be down there as well. But I'm just going to talk about this topic from my perspective, and I'm not gonna go into too much depth or into too many specifics on the origin of this conversation, but I will say that the origins of this conversation were kind of volatile, and one of the people who kind of got this conversation rolling can be somewhat abrasive. As Ron Litt touched on at the beginning of her very poignant video, that got the conversation off on the wrong foot. It had a lot of people focusing on the method on which it was started rather than the actual important issue itself. I think an important place to start is to say that there is no wrong way to approach reading. Reading is a form of consuming media and you can consume it however you want. This video should not be construed as any kind of this is the way that you should do things kind of video because who am I to tell you how to live your life and how to consume your stories. That being said, it goes without saying that being critical to a certain degree is important. That doesn't mean that you have to analyze everything that you read because to be honest up until very recently most of what I read was for 70 to 90 percent entertainment. I mean my taste and my the way that I approach reading has definitely changed over this last six months to a year. It only recently clicked in my adult life that being critical does not equate to being mean. I am like the person who eloquently started this discussion. I'm not abrasive. I don't I don't like to cause waves. I don't like to start conflict and I don't like hurting people's feelings. I don't like being mean. And that's the thing. Like for a long time in my brain I had this disconnect that if if I was being critical, this is this sounds so mean, but it's not. You can analyze something and you can see its flaws, but you can also you can also see its its good sides and you can also talk about its good sides. You can analyze something and say critical things about it without it being negative. They're not synonymous necessarily. And I think that that's a very important thing to remember when reading or consuming any media really because you can enjoy something but also see its flaws and realize that it's not a perfect thing which is really something that's easy for me to do considering one of my favorite like almost automatic buy authors is John Green. Like The Fallen Stars, I've said in the past, is one of my favorite books, and I hold to that. But I also see that it's not a perfect piece of literature. There are a lot of flaws, there's a lot of white privilege, there's a lot of unrealistic dialogue, and there's, there, it's just not perfect, and it's okay to love something, or even like something, or enjoy something, but it's also important to see its shortcomings. If you don't dig just a little deeper, sometimes you may consume and promote media that is problematic. A common example, and Holly, who also made a very good video over at the Library at the Edge of the World on this topic, used the excellent example of Twilight. A lot of people love Twilight, and when I read it, to be honest, I was a teenager and I liked it too. It does have some really, really harmful ideas about relationships. And you can still love the book, but it's so important to see that because especially when we're talking about literature that is for younger people, take something in subconsciously and not realize it. Like it's just promote certain things promoting negative ideas and things that aren't healthy. You should just look at it a little bit deeper and there's nothing wrong with that. And you, like I said, you can love something and also see its flaws. We can learn more from the flaws in literature than we can from the things that we love about it. I don't have the academic background to analyze things the way that some other excellent people on the internet do, but I can use my own experience and my own education to 
be critical to the extent that I can, and I encourage you all to do the same. I, I think that that's really all that I have to say about being critical. I'm, I'm sure that this was all circular and not very helpful, but I really wanted to put that out there. I really wanted to emphasize the idea that being critical is not being mean. And that's all that I have to say today. As always, please feel free to share any of your thoughts on anything that I said here today, how you feel about reading critically, do you consider yourself a critical reader. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you tomorrow with a new video.